Okay, hi, my name is Ken Dan Ford. I am the co-founder and executive director of North Star, self-directed learning for teens. And today I am talking with a recent alumna, Emma Gwyther. Hi, Emma. Hi, Ken. How are you today? I'm doing great. How are you Good. doing? I'm excellent. Where are yeah. you right now, Emma Gwyther? Uh, I'm in Montague, Massachusetts. Oh Montague. my goodness. Where are we you, just, Ken? I'm in Montague, Massachusetts, too. We are neighbors wow. now, and I didn't know that until we just found out. This is so exciting. All right. Emma Gwyther, how old are you now? 21. And what's the state of your life? What are you up to these days? Uh, I work for a nonprofit, uh, CISA, that focuses on supporting local farms, and I stay home. All right, you're working for home from home from mm -hmm. home for CISA, which stands for community involved in sustaining agriculture. Um, Emma Gwyther, 21. You have to be a college graduate to get a job working for a nonprofit like CISA. You do. You do. You are a 21 already, a college graduate. Aren't you a little young for such things? Uh, maybe. <laughs> Some people. I don't know. Worked out. All right, worked out. Well, we're going to ask the story of uh, the day. That could have been our teaser, but we're going to start over again with that. Um, <laughs> so you're 21. You're a college graduate. Where did you go to college, by the way? I went to Sterling College in Vermont. All right, and we'll come back to hear more about Sterling in a few minutes. Okay. But for now, let's jump back to uh, the beginning of our story, sure. which is you were in high school. You might have been 16, 15? I think I was 15. And yeah. you, you were in Amherst High, which is a you know reasonable, decent public school where I used to teach okay. the junior high back in the 90s before I started North Star. And... Um, what was going on for, for you at Amherst High that you ended up uh, contacting, or your family contacted North Star? Um, I was doing okay all around. I got decent grades and, you know, had some friends. And, um, yeah, it was pretty average high school, I would say, but I just wasn't enjoying it a ton. And there was this one night where I was home and sort of like having the usual <laughs> work debate with my parents. and. Um, I was getting pretty frustrated and just said I really didn't want to be at school anymore. And my mom sort of like made a snappy comment, or not snappy, I shouldn't say that, but she was like, well, if you don't want to be at school, don't go to school. Um, and I, I, I sort of thought she was kidding, but then I started, you know, poking around on the internet if I legally could drop out at 15 and then stumbled upon North Star. And that seemed like a really good step for me um, It's because it still provided some guidance and I talked to my parents about it. and. We came and we visited the next day. Do you think your mom knew about homeschooling in North Star when she made that snappy comment to you? <laughs> no, it wasn't snappy. She, it was just a remark. But um, I'm not sure if she knew about North Star. She sort of did a untraditional high school experience as well. So I think it was maybe somewhere in her brain, or she at least knew there were alternatives to public and, school. And your parents met in an alternative college, as I understand things. They did. Yeah, they met at Prescott College. Right. So they were familiar with some sense of alternative education, alternative schooling. And so your mom just said to you, well, then do something about it. Stop yakking at me exactly. about your stupid homework. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. But she didn't give you any more guidance and it was up to you to figure it out. Well, we sort of, that night when I found North Star's website, I was showing her it and we were poking around on the testimonials page and being like, look how cool this looks <laughs> together. So. <laughs> right. So then you came in and I must have told you, yeah, basically it's pretty simple. Just stop going. Mm -hmm. You're 15, file a homeschooling plan until you're 16 and mm -hmm. just do what you want. Do you remember that yeah. kind of? What, I what do. Was that I like? remember it very well, actually. I got a, yeah, I left school early that day to come meet with you. <laughs> <laughs> Never went back. Um, or maybe not. But uh, what do you remember about that day then? What, tell me the story. Um, yeah, I, so we came in, and this is at the old North Star location in Hadley, um, and I remember coming in, and there were some people sitting in the common room, um, and we got a quick tour of the place, and then we went up to your office, and I remember that conversation most well. My dad was still a little on the fence about, you know, leaving high school, but I think talking with you, he said, um, 
it's it felt hard for him not to be fully on board with it after that discussion um and it's pretty mind-blowing to me when you're just like yeah you don't need to go back to school ever like today could have been your last day if you want it to be um it's like what <laughs> that was that was really exciting for me um and then sort of once i heard that like it was just too hard i think i went back for like another week and i don't really know why um but it was just so hard to focus because i was sitting there being like i don't need to be here um yeah so it was pretty cool well, that's one of the favorite parts of my job, of course. Um, <laughs> do you remember, like, then what you did when you first started to, um, you know, use North Star and homeschool and be independent? What What was your life like then? Yeah, um, so I was 15. I was doing North Star four days a week and doing a fair amount of classes when I was there and tutorials and one-on-ones and things like that. Um, and making friends and hanging out with them. Um, I was also going to the climbing gym with my dad a lot during the day, which was awesome because it was less crowded. Um, yeah, just sort of doing that. I started looking for a job pretty quickly and then started working at a kid's clothing store. So I was doing that you know, in the afternoons and doing some babysitting and things like that. Um, and it sort of started to shape up. I was pretty eager in the first few months to like, have a routine and uh feel like I didn't just like walk away from high school um and like then not have another plan in place but things sort of fell into place pretty quickly. But do you remember any um particular classes or activities or tutorials at North Star that mattered to you that first few months? Yeah um I I'm not really sure if it was in the, like the exact first few months but like some of the classes I did that really stood out were was a writing workshop with Susanna. Um, I did social issues with you. Um, Deirdre and I were doing this one-on-one -on -one with now, I think, with like uh, plant identification and things like that. And that was pretty cool. Um, I think I was doing harm and punishment, also with Susanna, uh, yoga, I like women's circle, um, all sorts of things, really. I was just eager to try things out. Right, and you then remained pretty involved at North Star for maybe two years, two and a half, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it says, like, really involved for one year and then there for a few days a week for another year, and yeah. Right, and by senior year, you were done because you had the job. Yeah. At this clothing store, this used clothing store for children that you were now not opening. used but yeah oh, not, clothing store <laughs> oh why did i think that i don't know sorry that's okay. my apologies to the store owner um they're closed now so. <laughs> well at any rate by the when you were a high school senior and done with north Star and doing lots mm -hmm. of things you were also like opening and closing that store sometimes i think or opening yeah yeah right you were you were a young adult really at 17 there you were doing yeah. community college by then too. I was, yeah, I was pretty much full time community college. And how and was that as a you know late high school kid? You were doing community college a pretty mm -hmm. full time way. Was mm -hmm. that easy, hard? Yeah, I thought it was pretty easy. Classwork was great and straightforward. I really enjoyed the classes because you know you can choose what classes you want to take. Um, I'd say the only thing that was like maybe a little odd about it was socially, I was a lot younger than my classmates. Um, so, but Were you an, I an, Did you I consider I yourself good. an environmentalist back then? Yeah, I would say so. I was, like the classes I was taking at GCC were like ecology and environmental science and, um, and then like other classes too. I took a math class and a writing class. And, and were you already something of a budding environmentalist or such when you were in high school too before you ever like did you still like those were already career possibilities for you or ideas yeah i mean my mom studied environmental science and my dad studied outdoor ed so i'd say mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. sort of always um been. so you you left high school with a little bit of coaching, you used our community center in a full up kind of way for a year or so or two. Mm -hmm. And and then you had community college and a job and um, you made it seem easy. Mm -hmm. Would you say looking back on it, it was like 
fairly straightforward and for you or was it harder than it seemed? No, I'd say it was way more straightforward than I could have possibly imagined it to be. Like sort of just like once I got past the mental block of being like, I'm not going to be in high school and like I'm going to have to sort of plan what I want to do with my time. Um, yeah, it, it came together quite naturally, I'd say. And I'd say the same for my brother. Yes, yeah, so I want to get to your brother in a few minutes. Okay. Um, but this as a prelude to your brother and your parents. You have an awesome yes. family. Your parents I are among agree. the Hall of Fame of North Star parents. <laughs> greatest so parents ever at North Star. And, uh, and your brother, of course, too, as we'll share later. But let's keep on your story for a moment longer. Okay. Um, so you have this, you know, cool couple of years. Instead of finishing 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th grade, you're out there living in community college and North Star and jobs and just doing all the things. And then you, um, how did you find Sterling College? I think you might have recommended it to me, actually. <laughs> I think it's actually quite true. It might have. I, I didn't mean to fish for that, but I'll take it. Um, he was a nice guy, that dude. I, you know, the dude came and I had a nice meeting with him from Sterling College, and I was like, "Oh, I should was try to send Tim him somebody." Was Patterson? Yes. Yeah. Yes, he's very friendly. <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted to send him somebody, you know, and I got him. I got you to apply. Um, yeah. Did you apply to other colleges too at that time as a potential four-year college experience? I, oh, you're frozen. Oh, well, let's keep Yeah, going. well, actually, I only applied to uh, Sterling College and then to Prescott College, where my parents went, and I heard back from both of them before I finished filling out the applications for others, and they were my top two choices, so I was like, I'm just going to not finish the hassle of writing college admission essays and be done with it. So for people who don't know, Sterling College is a farm college, and Prescott College is kind of an outdoor education college. In Arizona, they're both really small. Yes, also and... Sterling College does outdoor ed as well. <laughs> oh, was it a good call for you to go there? Did you, are you happy yeah. with your choice? Yeah, I was really happy with it. Um, for those, give a plug, give a shout out to Sterling College. Tell us about sure. it. Sure. Um, yeah, so they are an environmental school. They offer outdoor ed sustainable agriculture, sustainable food systems, ecology, or you can design your own major sort of within those majors. It's very, very small. It's like 130 students total, I want to say. Um, and everyone, it's a work college, so you have a job on campus and it's in very rural Vermont. Um, so some people sort of thought it was like very, well, it is very small. It's sort of like in the middle of nowhere, but I thought it was perfect because um, there are plenty of opportunities to work on their farm, to do all sorts of outdoor ed classes as extracurriculars that I really enjoyed. Um, and then I was also wanting to do the food systems major. Um, and I liked that it was so small and you really sort of, um, it was easy to find your place within that. And I was sort of already used to um, alternative schools and sort of having to advocate for what you want and really or not advocate for what you want but sort of create um your own your own plan and you they must have ex around, and, and they sterling must have accepted some of your community college credits on the way up there. they did yeah um so i finished sterling oh i was at sterling for three and a half years wow mm -hmm. okay. and um it seems like a while ago i don't know but you just graduated so congratulations Thank One you. more thing about Sterling in college, whether it's GCC or Sterling, while you were doing all this academia as a <laughs> not finishing high school kind of kid, were there ever any moments when you were flustered that everybody knew something that you didn't know, some kind of biology fact or history fact or things kids learn in school that you just didn't know because you were some rebel dropout loser <laughs> punk? Um, no, and also the internet is really helpful, so if you don't know something, it's pretty easy to Google it, and also people who do finish high school also don't know a lot of things because it's hard to remember all that information, you just lose it. So was there ever any um, either socially awkward moments where you're sterling, you know, or just, you know, you say not academically awkward, even socially, that they're like, so what did you do for high school, and you were... Like, mm -hmm. I don't know, I just sort of opted out. Did that ever come up? It, I mean, it came up. People did ask about your life prior to Sterling. Um, but 
No, I wouldn't say it was too socially awkward. Um, I think most people at Sterling, a lot of them sort of also have their own path that they end up to get to such an odd school in the first place. So mm-hmm. um, yeah, maybe not odd, but unique school. And mm-hmm. uh, so, yeah, everyone, no one was like, oh, my God, you were homeschooled. What a loser. <laughs> you must not know how to make friends. Were there other homeschoolers at Sterling, too, by the way? Probably. Oh, you don't even yeah, know. Yeah, there has to be. Up. It doesn't know. even matter. All right. Yeah. Um, um, so here's a like an important question to me is uh-huh. looking back on the whole arc then of the last, say, six, seven years from the time we first met when you were 15 to now, um, you opted out of high school, you used North Star Community College, part-time jobs, moved to Sterling, graduated and now you're back here working for an environmental nonprofit doing important environmental farm related work um this all might have happened anyway had you just stayed in school so yeah uh, what um you were functional enough you would have made it through amherst high <laughs> yeah i could have so what uh, what part of this really matters what part of it sticks for you that like mm-hmm. you opted out of school and didn't just do the regular thing? Um, Well, I think like the first thing that comes to mind was like, I just had a better time doing this and I was a happier person. (laughs) Um, And that was great. And I also, I think it really helped me to learn that like, if you, to like go and find the resources to make what you want happen. So when I was applying to this job, you know, I didn't have any fundraising or development experience, but I still had about, I'd say another two months left at Sterling. So I reached out to the woman in the admissions office at Sterling. I was like, hey, I'm applying to this job at this really cool nonprofit, but I don't have any development experience. Um, and she was really sweet and sort of gave me a crash course in development um, that really helped me in applying there. And yeah, I think just being able to be comfortable making a decision that's not super straightforward and you know I've spent the past four years describing what sustainable food systems is to people and like why I'm majoring in it um and things like that so yeah so you graduated from college and got a good job in your field Mm -hmm. near where you grew up in western mass that's kind of incredible exciting (laughs) I know I'm, I'm also surprised that happened all right, and I don't want to get too distracted, but for the sake of it, let's do a quick uh, recognition of CISA. And could you um, give the you know short paragraph of what CISA actually does um, as an organization? Sure. Yes, so we support the local food economy. We mostly provide um, assistance to farmers, and we do that through a variety of our programs. We offer one-on-one technical assistance on um, you know business planning, financial management, things like that. Some of our other programs are Senior Farm Share, which I've been working on right now, um, which is a program where we get a grant that we pay farmers with to provide low-income seniors with a 10-week farm CSA share. Um, We also do some advocacy work. We've advocated for continued and increased funding for HIP, which is the Healthy Incentives Program. Um, which is a state program in Massachusetts. And yeah, we try and engage the community. We run the, you know, little buy local, uh, sorry, be a local hero, buy locally grown campaign. Right, CISA um, came on the scene either, kind of right when Northstar did, I think, you know, 50, yeah. 20 years ago maybe. Yeah. And they had this awesome uh, be a local hero bumper yeah. sticker and button and buy local that but it was be a local hero yes was the slogan and that's where um kind of inspired me to dream up a slogan too i gotta have it they got a slogan nice. they're doing it right <laughs> that's you know we came up with schools or learning is natural school is optional it's our slogan. you know your own slogan <laughs> <laughs> that's in my book title now for god's sakes all right anyway we came up with it but cisa was yeah. largely inspirational for that and cisa is awesome um prod- uh, community member of uh, Western Massachusetts here. Um, okay, so thank you. I just want to, before we conclude, um, mm-hmm. 
your story is pretty straightforward um, by my reckoning and by, you know, North Star. It's a very positive story. And I do agree with you that at minimum, it allowed you to have a much happier teenage life than you might have just yeah. managing school. And you might have ended up at Sterling anyway, or, you know, you might have applied to press. I mean, you, you were on the track, you have your family. Um, right. All this could have happened, but you probably would be um, a year behind where you are and you would have had a lot less joy of waking up so early in the morning to do school every day. Um, mm -hmm. you know, I think you probably would have been a little claustrophobic in there after a few years, but, but you, of all our cases, this is just, you know, I celebrate with you um, offering a healthy kid who's inspired and doesn't want to settle for school then early out and just go ahead and go for it. And, and that was right up your alley. Um, you have a younger brother yes. who, uh, also is rather inspirational. Yes. Um, now, um, Cohen, mm -hmm. can you just, you had the decency of when you left North Star to replace yourself mm -hmm. with a sibling. We appreciate yeah, people like you who do welcome. that. <laughs> <laughs> um, what, what was, uh, you know, in a nutshell, just pay, uh, tell us the Cohen arc of homeschooling. Okay, um, well, I didn't consult with him beforehand, but Yeah, we he, know that. Yeah, I know him pretty well, he's my brother. He was in elementary school. He did all the way up till sixth grade. And then he started deciding if he wanted to do middle school or not. And um, I was at North Star. He was familiar with it. I think he'd spent some time there with me. And I'm not, I'm not entirely sure why he, uh, like his personal reasons for choosing North Star. I think he also similarly just didn't want to subject himself to all that middle school can be. Um, and he saw how positive North Star had been in my life. Um, and yeah, he, so it was, it was definitely different because he has done more, um, like, I think my parents sort of have been more involved with some of the, like, planning of academics and things that have been going on, but he's also super self-directed in that, um, he started community college when he was, what, 14? Um, yeah, he was incredible. And, and our local for yeah. listeners, Greenfield Community College has no lower age limit. So young students can start with classes at, at yep. unusually young ages. Um, there. And, and so he has an yeah, he has an associate's degree now. Or when he was 17, he had an associate's degree. But, but, but may I interrupt mm -hmm. that Cohen yeah, was doing like calculus and physics yeah. and yeah. chemistry <laughs> and like... Uh, he is the way like math science C, whereas I'm <laughs> way not math and science He's like some 16-year-old full-time like engineer fella. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And, but he and also, he had, a, he had a phase where he was still math and science -y, but he also came to the climbing gym constantly with my dad oh. and I, and that was, that was great timing, or not great timing, but, but great times to, um, not be in school and have the right. option to do that. Right. He, he was definitely a climber. Um, yeah. All right. So then what happened? So, uh, you know, then he was, he was a member at North Star longer than you were. Yeah. And in some yeah. extent had, had, you know, a deeper impact on our community. If it's possible, well, I shouldn't compare you, but he was, <laughs> he was there longer. Let's put it that way. Okay. Um, uh, and then now, and then he, he did community college and then went off to UMass. Yes, he did. And he is. How old is, is Cohen now? Uh, he just turned 18. He's probably almost done with undergraduate. A little ways to go still, but yeah. He'll be, I think he'll have a bachelor's degree when he's 19, 19 or 20. He'll have a bachelor's degree. All right. And, and again, I'm just going to repeat that your parents are awesome. Um, you, you guys do the climbing together. Your, your dad is a firefighter, which made him have a unusual schedule of sometimes mm -hmm. staying days off that he could really be present with you and, and Cohen. Yeah. And it was just super sweet, um, a yeah. lovely schedule for you guys. And um, you know, he would help with field trips and stuff like that when he was free on, his, mm -hmm. on those days. Um, he would always help with the rock climbing days. Anyway, <laughs> the Gwythers are in the North Star uh, pantheon of awesome families. So. Um, so thank you. Thank you for sharing your story here. And, of um, you know, one of the things I like to say is keep simple things simple. And um, you, yeah. you did keep things simple, but you also, you know, made things really awesome as well. So um, I think it's, it's a super inspiring 
story. Thank you. Yeah, well, thank you. Thank okay. you for North Star. <laughs> You're welcome. I will stop here. Take, okay. take it. Bye-bye. You too. Thank you.